Yeah, I'm Archie Wade. Uh, I work at the, the CTO office for ARIA Networks. Uh, we're a small company with um, uh, AI specifically in the, in the network context. Um, I'm also helping the rapporteur in these cases. Um, so, as Ray, uh, as Ray mentioned, um, uh, the first phase is pretty much uh, complete on the, on the use cases. Uh, that report has been uh, released um, and is available on, online. Um, so the idea of this particular work item is to find the use cases and the scenarios that, that uh, will feed into the requirements and then into the architecture for the ENI system. Uh, we're in the second phase at the moment, um, so we're, we're uh, improving on the, the existing use cases and adding any new ones that, that come in. So if you've got any ideas, always welcome. Um, right. So our use cases uh, break down into pretty much these, these five high-level use cases. Um, so intelligent policy control, as, as Ray mentioned, we're a policy-based system. Uh, intelligent service deployment, uh, resource management, intelligent monitoring, and analysis, uh, analysis and prediction. Now, obviously, these all feed into each other. So, uh, for example, um, intelligent monitoring uh, could mean that the system is uh, automatically collecting all the all the, um, the the required metrics, the required faults, the, all the information and errors, and then that goes into a, 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 an, an analysis and a, or a prediction um, phase, and then that that gives a, a, an indication to the the resource management in order to actually optimize the system. So, use cases. We've got uh, 15, as Ray mentioned, split into four categories. Um, as you can see, we've got six uh, stars there, which I will give you a bit more depth on those particular use cases. Um, and also, uh, which one's the little? That one, and yeah, Will will be using. Uh, will will be discussing the POC around the intelligent slicing. So, oh, that one. So the first uh, first category of use cases is the the infrastructure management. Um, so this covers uh, processes related to um, the management of network infrastructure. So, um, uh, yeah, maintenance, um, uh, specifications, planning, those kind of uh, ideas. Um, uh, policies uh, for managing the infrastructure um, uh, will be will be uh, created or. or um, or um, amended in this set of use cases. So the first one we'll look at is uh, IDC traffic steering. So the idea being that we want to uh, we want to um, uh, load balance uh, uh, the links between sorry the links between um, IDCs. So obviously. Uh, these are being deployed at the moment, uh, providing uh, a lot of um, resiliency in, in the uh, metropolitan area networks. Uh, in order to provide some kind of service assurance for, for important customers, um, perhaps administrators would uh, schedule the traffic uh, in specific periods. Um, this kind of management is usually complex and uh, a, if it's done manually, it has a long cycle to it. Um, so it's very difficult to meet any kind of real-time requirement. Um, large large uh, providers' traffic uh, is also sensitive to what's happening during the day. So, for example, um, a large sale or a, a large social media issue um, causing significant events in traffic cannot be manually uh, um, or cannot be 
easily manually uh, handled. Um, so uh, again, this can affect the issue. Uh, this can affect the the the, the SLAs of important clients. Um, So the, the final thing I guess to say on, on this is that the, the ENI system can be used um, to achieve intelligent link load balancing and intelligent bandwidth allocation. Um, I'll, I'll show you how this. Keep pressing the wrong button. So in order to do that, the ENI system uh, collects and anal analyzes the real-time data. It gives recommendations, um, for example, uh, what particular metrics to, to monitor at any at given times, depending upon the, 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 the situation of the network, uh, the context of the network as well. The ONI system should also be predicting the changes in the service requirements. Um, uh, and this will be based on historical data, presumably, um, but if we can find other ways to, to, to uh, gain wisdom about the way the network's working, then that would also be brought into the system. Um, monitoring and um, continuous correction, important part of any uh, machine learning system. Um, and the, the uh, analysis of, of the, the, uh, the quality of service data, um, basically, and, and feeding that into directly into policy modification. So that those modified policies can then be, be stored as an ideal policy set that would basically be used in future. Uh, and all of this can lead us to a overall network resource optimization, uh, balanced traffic, and, and eff efficiently used bandwidth. So the second use case we'll look at uh, is the idea of energy optimization. Um, so, as it, as it as mentions here, uh, power consumption uh, is, a, is a, large, uh, uh, a large share of any OPEX for, uh, uh, for a network operator. Um, the data center is thought to take up about 70% of the total power consumption. So that is a, that's a, a big impact. Um, the servers that are running in that data center are generally running to meet a peak hour requirement. Now, these, are, these things are handled at present in, in various different ways, but um, the idea that we're having a, a high power, or we could have a high power uh, uh, draw consistently when actually it's not being used very often is, is um, an obvious place for uh, optimization for improvement. So sometimes it's possible to, for example, move services off to a different data center to uh, perhaps uh, uh, turn, turn down the idle, service, uh, the idle servers so that we're, we're saving energy throughout the day. Um, so the, as shown in this figure, basically all the green area we would expect to be potential OPEX savings. So that's a, it's a large proportion of the amount of money that's being spent on, uh, a, uh, on power at present. So the way that ENI will do this, again, uh, a lot of it is about learning the, the, the usage patterns of the services. So uh, traditionally, the way that these, these energy saving um, processes are, are managed is, is a manual. Um, you would have a, a configurable set of uh, uh, servers and, uh, sorry, a, a configurable pool of servers and uh, you, would, you would pull from that as required. Um, that thing, those kind of things are time limited and, and are not really uh, ideal for real time. Work so using an ENI system, uh, we can learn the pat uh, the pattern of the usage. We can uh, update which servers are used in real time. Um, we can also trigger the movement of the services and uh, move uh, particular uh, uh, particular um, uh, workloads from different services to to uh, aggregate in in particular data centers. So this kind of thing. Um, 
means that perhaps we can look into minimizing carbon footprint. Um, we can move uh, particular services out to, say, edge resource, or we could move to a particular data center um, that we know is powered by uh, some kind of renewable, uh, renewable power at particular times of day, or those kind of things. But all, of the, all the while, we can make sure we do this whilst we're, we're um, uh, making sure the OPEX is, is optimal. So the next set we're going to look at is the network's operations use cases. Um, uh, concerned with running the network, uh, so the context, is, as we discussed earlier, the real-time context and the situation of the network are, are, are extracted and analyzed. Um, so, so the system is aware of where the network is at any given time. Uh, and again, any operations we're doing, we're doing dynamically. Real time, near as damn it. Um, so, in this instance, we're looking at policy based network slicing, so IoT, um, smart cities uh, built on, on a, a huge number of IoT um, devices. Um, and these, these devices are, are what makes the smart city. They're, they're the vital role in deployment of the services. Um, so to support this, this deployment of, of devices, uh, we can um, uh, aggregate the, these, uh, these devices into slices, essentially. So we could have a security or a city operations um, slice, or a management slice. Um, or any other kind of lower level slice requirements, latency, high bandwidth, that sort of thing. <coughs> so uh, uh, in this particular context then, uh, attacks on a, on a IoT device, so such as a, a DDoS attack, um, can be a real, uh, can be a real issue for, um, uh, for the network. So, uh, in this figure, we've got a, 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 rep a, a representation of, of the idea that we're going to isolate particular parts of our, our secure network slice. So we're going to isolate these particular um, uh, devices on a, on a slice, and we're going to ensure that the behavior, uh, sorry, we're going to ensure that the, the attack is, is not um, uh, spread throughout the slice, uh, throughout the network, rather. So... In this instance, the role of ENI, we're detecting specific traffic patterns. So we're working out what is a DDoS, and we're trying to work that out quickly. Um, these attacks change a lot, and they, they, they grow. Uh, simple pattern recognition algorithms are no longer uh, always uh, sufficient to, to be able to recognize these things early enough that you're not causing a problem to the system. Um, so if we have an attack, uh, then the ENI system should be able to learn from how it works, uh, learn from what, what's coming in. Uh, this should also trigger an appropriate response. So we should be automatically isolating the attack devices we should be handling the, the change in the, the, um, the load on the, the network slice. Uh, in addition to that, there's, there's the opportunity here to learn from um, the way that the, the various different attacks um, will correlate with, with these DDoS attacks. So people will uh, uh, unlikely to just throw one particular attack at something. There'll be a, there'll be a wide range. So, yeah. So, our next use case is front hall management and orchestration. So, slicing uh, slicing the resources at the front hall. So, we, we end up with a, um, a remote uh, radio units and uh, centralized baseband units, for example. Uh, a very complex issue. Um, especially in uh, doing it dynamically or, or on demand. 
uh, this kind of this kind of use case is is um, basically around the, the the complexity of the the problem itself, and it's a design problem. So. Uh, in this particular instance, we have, as it says here, dimensionality, power, process and compute, uh, capability, resources, uh, the memory, the root, all of these things need to be taken into account if we're going to design a, a, essentially a, a, a front hall um, system. So this functional split obviously does bring lots of advantages. Um, uh, and, and can reduce the operating costs, but as I say, it's it's a it's at it's at it's only if we can find a way to to um, to cope with the complexity of the challenge. So, ENI aims to have an optimization uh, uh, framework on the front all. So what I, what we what we mean by this is uh, an efficient way of optimizing uh, all these elements of the front hall, that, that, that balancing the multiple aspects that we considered beforehand, so the the power and the, and, and the routing and so on and so forth. Um, this should enable a, a more flexible and um, dynamic uh, slicing. Um, and it should consider the way that the context changes over time. So the traffic demand um, at, at, uh, at the radio uh, side or um, uh, load in the back hall, those kind of things. Um, so again, as an example, um, if we use load estimation and prediction um, with, with a, a, a with the, the ENI system, um, the front hall management and the orchestration should be able to be de uh, designed in such a way that we're guaranteeing our, our required KPIs on the front hall. Uh, so, service orchestration and management use cases. Um, uh, these use cases uh, uh, basically covering um, activating services and differentiating services depending on uh, subscription and or the application type. So the example here is that one, uh, a carrier managed um, SD-WAN. So consider uh, an enterprise with a, a hybrid WAN, um, including uh, a, a large, um, so a uh, high quality rather uh, MPLS service uh, circuit and, and uh, economic public internet, and then your your ha your this is all being managed by uh, uh, the carrier um, for the enterprise, and this is. M done multiple times, this is again a very complex issue. So each enterprise could have uh, customized services, um, you're going to have uh, different traffic and all being held by different uh, WAN policies, which is again uh, going to add to complexity. You're going to have variable network conditions across um, the different enterprises. So complexity again, something that ENI can handle. So if we're using um, AI, we're using context awareness, we're monitoring the network and we're helping to continually optimize uh, uh, this enterprise one, uh, this enterprise SD1. Um, and obviously that allows the, uh, the enterprise itself to focus more on that. It allows the carrier to uh, be a bit more hands off. Um, so uh, the other advantage here is to enable uh, an intent-based interface um, uh, to allow enterprises to customize their particular service using natural language. So 
uh, familiar terminology. So you could have a policy that says uh, all policies are uh, all policies that are applied to personal devices um, will also apply to guest devices, and this kind of uh, intent-based policy should be part of the the um, uh, intent-based policy interpretation should be part of the ENI system. Um, and on top of that, we're also again going to use our ability to learn and to understand the network as we go along, and we're going to use that to try and suggest policy adaptations to network administrators. So you could, for example, say that um, uh, it's been noticed that guest devices tend to use a, a lot of bandwidth video streaming. So, okay, fair enough, the, the ENI system would uh, 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 Propose a policy saying that okay, we need to lower this priority. We need to uh, we need to restrict uh, in some way the guest uh, the guest accounts. So the final uh, uh, group of use cases is the the network assurance use cases. So concerned with the the functionality of the monitoring. Um, trending and prediction on the network, uh, taking policy-based actions uh, uh, and, and basically facilitating network uh, uh, maintenance and uh, that, that may be sort of um, uh, plan maintenance or real-time maintenance, um, all dedicated basically to uh, uh, continuous service delivery. So, this particular one, looking at assurance of service requirements. Um, again, if you're considering specific, say, banking industry using a dedicated network infrastructure um, uh, so that they can guarantee they have a particular set of, uh, that their particular set of requirements are met, these are, uh, they have a huge cost in terms of planning and management and, and will take a, a long time to be deployed. Um, they would the, the industry would, would prefer to, to have these, uh, uh, these systems deployed and, and managed um, uh, by network operators, obviously. Uh, it's not part of their core business. Um, if they could have the control so furthermore, over, over the lifetime operation of, this, of these systems, any change to the infrastructure um, will, will it, by, by its very essence, um, uh, increase the complexity of, the, of any kind of assurance. So the idea is that we're trying to replace these networks with a, a dedicated slice. And as long as these slices are capable of, of meeting their, the strict uh, requirements, then um, uh, the use of, of um, uh, an E&I system to, to maintain those, rec uh, those requirements uh, will, will help solve the situation. So, how does the E&I system work? Um, yeah, so consider uh, network slices associated to each dedicated network are created and running optimally and, and, and um, everything is going well and according to the SLAs. Uh, that's fine, but then what happens if one slice uh, deviates from its, its expected uh, usage patterns? How will that affect other slices being uh, uh, provided by the uh, by network operator, how will that uh, affect the other services on those other slices? Um, using ENI, uh, we should be able to simulate and predict uh, any kind of hazardous uh, it, it, uh, increases, hazardous or unexpected changes in demand, um, which can cause problems uh, uh, across multiple. Um, across multiple slices. So uh, there's preventative measures that we can use in so resource uh, reservation, those kind of things, but those, when you don't need them a lot, they're, they're quite wasteful. So in other cases, um, so perhaps it's not possible to predict a certain scenario in advance, then we need to have a, a, a good way of dealing with these things as they come up on a sort of ad hoc basis. 
Um, so again, the example would be prioritizing a particular slice over another because that SLA is, is more rigorous or more uh, rigid. Okay. So that's a, 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 a list of, or a, an idea of six of the use cases we've considered. And all of these use cases have been analyzed and, and taken forward into the requirements um, and again into the system uh, architecture. What I think you'll find is that these are the, the, the sort of the most uh, repeated requirements coming out of all these use cases. We need to be able to adapt to changing contexts. We need to be autonomous, and we're going to do that through policy-driven uh, operation. We need to be dynamic. We need to work with the network as it changes, which means real-time, near as damn it, real-time. Optimizing the resource usage, whether that is bandwidth or power or any other kind of aspect of the, the network resource, whilst maintaining security. And we want to do this, and we want uh, we want to do this in a way that is simplified for the for the operators. Essentially, they need to be able to see how these things can work easily, and we need to be able to guarantee that what we're saying we can deliver, we will actually deliver. So uh, that's all I've got on this. Um, if you have any questions or any interest in other use cases, as I say, we're we're looking for other ones, uh, either get in touch with me, uh, I'm there, or uh, Dr. Wang, who is the rapporteur for this particular um, work package. Um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>